Welcome to Fast Recaps. Today I'll be explaining a war drama film titled 13 Minutes. Before we start, be aware there are spoilers. Jorg Elser, a guy who could have saved millions of lives and altered the course of history if he had only 13 more minutes. Adolf Hitler and his minions would have been annihilated in 13 more minutes if he had used the bomb he had built himself. The movie begins with Jorg Elser carefully piling up some homemade sticks of dynamite into a stone pillar of Burger Brockler in Munich, Germany. He then sets up the clockwork mechanism and covers the hole. He makes sure that everything is appropriately concealed. He seems to have hurt himself in the process of setting this up. His knees are in pain and he has wounds on his hand. However, he remains committed to the task. He then checks where his target will sit and deliver his speech. He then leaves the building knowing that the explosives are right behind the podium. Adolf Hitler, the German leader and the assassination target is welcomed with cheers by his peers. He is there to deliver his annual commemoration speech. His speech centers on the anniversary of the Beer Hall Putsch that transpired 16 years ago. It was a failed attempt to overthrow the government. Behind him is where the bombs are hidden. He is handed over a note informing him that lousy weather prevents his plane from leaving. Hitler continues his empathic speech. George checks his pocket watch nervously and then proceeds to the German-Swiss border in an attempt to escape. Two German officers call his attention as he's about to cross the border. He explains that he's looking for his friend from the Constance Folklore Society, but they remain suspicious. They bring him into their station and seize all the items in his possession, including a building blueprint. While he's being searched, he glances at a wall clock anxiously. The time is 9 in the evening. He knows that it's just a matter of time before the explosion. One officer sees his red front badge. He is told that it's illegal and is forced to face the wall. As the officer pats him down, he notices that Jorg has injuries and puts him behind bars right away. Jorg grabs his pocket watch, shaking. At exactly 9.20 p.m., a vast explosion ensues. He remains seated in the holding station, not knowing if the assassination is a success or not. At the Reich security main office, an officer is informed of what just transpired in Berlin. Soldiers are in full alert mode. Meanwhile, police chief Arthur Neib's convoy heads towards Jorg's village. He informs local party leader Eberl that all the relatives of Jorg are to report to the square. He is taken aback as he knows that the Elsers are good citizens. He asks what Jorg has gotten himself into. Furious, Neib orders him to follow his command. It did not take long for the officers to locate Jorg's family, including Elsa, his ex-fiancé. Elsa is taken into custody while Ebril grabs her children. Ebril warns her to let go of her children, or the officers will take them too. Neeb checks the footage of the aftermath with his officers. He's blown away by the damage that the explosion caused. Jorg is brought into Neeb's office tied behind his back. As he enters the room, he sees some torture paraphernalia on the table as Neeb joins enter the room. Jorg refuses to greet the officer the way they do by saying, Hail Hitler. Neeb informs Els that he's in charge of his case. He also introduces Gestapo head Heinrich Muller. Jorg is ordered to remove his trousers as Neeb wants to see his knees. He is then told that the explosion killed seven innocent victims and that Hitler is alive as he left the venue 13 minutes before the bomb went off. Jorg is devastated by the news. That was his only chance. Muller begins to interrogate Jorg but he refuses to cooperate. He then puts himself back to the past when he was with his friends having fun at the lake in 1932. He was an accordion player and a woodworker living a simple and happy life. Part of the recollection shows him working as a clockmaker. While engrossed, he received a letter telling him that his father had sold two fields, this time, the most valuable ones. To sort things out, Jorg went back home to his family. His mother hugged him while his father was in a deep sleep due to intoxication. While helping his father cut a huge log, he noticed that he was drinking cider again. Jorg has had enough of this. He mustered up the courage to confront his father this time and threw the booze away. Jorg remains unfazed in the interrogation room as he knows he's not working for anyone. He's tied down on a bed and is given one more opportunity to confess. Not getting any progress, the torture begins and Jorg screams in agony. He is then sent back behind bars. Neeb and Muller are discussing their next move on how to get a written confession from Jorg. Neeb asks for the list of relatives that have been arrested. He knows what can break Jorg down. Never brings in Elsa, whom Jorg dated despite being married already to her abusive husband, Erich. Knowing what they can do to her if he does not confess, Jorg decides to own up to what he did. He gives out his personal details and reveals that he acted alone. 
never refuses to believe that he's apolitical as he's been caught wearing a red front badge. Jorg explains that being free is enough for him to do what is right and that he does not need to be affiliated with any parties. Neber and Muller report to the Obergruppenfuhrer, who refuses to believe that Jorg acted on his own. Neber admits that there's not enough evidence to prove that someone ordered Jorg to carry out the bombing. The Obergruppenfuhrer wants them to intensify their investigation as ordered by Hitler. Jorg writes a confession letter detailing what he did and how he did it. However, both Neber and Muller do not believe it. They want to know where he got the materials and who gave him the order to carry out the assassination. Frustrated that they refuse to believe, Jorg makes up an elaborate story that he received a call from Winston Churchill and was asked to kill Hitler. This irritates the officers and he is again tied down. He asks for a pen and a paper to illustrate how he did it. The scene goes back to the time when Jorg was in a pub with his friends. Arich came in with a bloody face. He admitted to Everly that it was Elsa who did it. He then added that Elsa would not be talking back to him anymore. Sensing that Elsa might be badly hurt, Jorg hurried to Elsa's house and found her lying on the bed crying. As he was about to comfort her, she kissed him and they made love. That was the beginning of their affair, which Jorg's mother highly disapproved of. Back in his jail, Jorg admits to never how he was able to accumulate the gunpowder from the steel factory where he worked from. He also divulges how he was able to get the materials for the dynamite. Never wants Jorg to admit that he's covering for someone else, but Jorg is very firm that he acted alone. Jorg shows them how required two clockworks and the detonator triggered the explosion. Back to Jorg's past, Elsa revealed that she was pregnant, but she was not quite sure if it was Jorg's or Erich. Listening to the radio discreetly, Jorg and Joseph found out that Hitler ordered the bombing of a Spanish town, killing 260 innocent civilians. This infuriated Jorg, and he wanted to put a stop to it, primarily having known that Hitler was also planning to attack other countries. Jorg and Elsa made out when Erich caught them. Jorg was renting in the basement of the couple when this happened. Elsa was thrown to the floor. Jorg grabbed a knife and threatened to kill Erich. Jorg began to plan how to carry out the assassination. He collected news articles that showed Hitler giving speeches every year at the exact location. Behind Hitler's podium was a giant Nazi party flag covering a solid pillar. He knew what the next step would be. He waited until the venue was empty and then went behind the post to get an accurate dimension that would be required to carry out his plan. He got what he needed. Back in the interrogation room, Jorg expresses his disgust about Hitler and his policies. Salaries are low, protesters are sent to concentration camps, and Jews are being discriminated against because of their fate. Jorg adds that there will be consequences to what Hitler is doing and that it will lead to the downfall of Germany. His typewritten confession is then finalized. Neber is now convinced that Jorg was on his own when the attack was executed. Muller, on the other hand, is not. While the two are discussing their next move, Jorg begs the secretary to send a message to Elsa and his family. He also wants to send condolences to those who got killed. The number of casualties is now eight. The secretary secretly gives Elsa's photo to Jorg and asks him not to tell anybody that he got it from her. A flashback to Jorg's past showed Elsa giving birth to their son, whom she named Jorg. This did not stop Jorg from his determination to carry out his plan. He kept honing his skill to perfect the execution of the bombing. He tried it on a tree in a remote area, and the explosion was massive and brought down the tree. Back to the present, the Obergruppenfuhrer storms the office of Neeb and slams Jorg's face on the table repeatedly after hearing what he said about their leader, Hitler. Neeb starts to show that resistance but does not dare to act on it. The Obergruppenfuhrer then instructs Neeb and Muller to do whatever it takes to find out whom Jorg got the order from. The Obergruppenfuhrer emphasizes that the directive comes directly from Hitler. Jorg is then tied down and drugged. This turns out to be unproductive as Jorg has nothing to hide. In a flashback, Jorg and Elsa lost their son. Jorg decided to move to Munich without telling Elsa what his actual plan was to continue with his plan. Uncertain of their future, Elsa bid goodbye. Jorg wakes up after being drugged. He admits that he now wants to make amends and integrates himself back into the community. He also adds that his conviction was wrong. He added that if he was right, the assassination would have succeeded. He is then sent to the Dachau concentration camp. Five years after, Neve is sentenced to death for his part in an assassination attempt to kill Hitler. He is executed by means of hanging. In the Dachau concentration camp, 
Jorg learns about the fate of Neep from France, a disabled prison guard who got the news from the new prisoners. Jorg is surprised but is also concerned about Elsa. He wants to know where she is. He believes that she might be still alive and might be in prison somewhere. While empathetic, France knows that there's nothing that he can do about it. The guard shares that he's been admitted to the College of Music for the Disabled to lighten up the mood as a way of showing gratitude to Jorg. He then gives some music sheets that Jorg can play using his sitter, a musical instrument. Jorg then plays the sitter and sings along with it. Jorg asks France the quickest way to die as he's been waiting for too long. The movie ends with Jorg praying is informed by France that England annihilated one of their cities and that 100,000 died in just one night. Jorg feels guilty as he knows that this could have been prevented if his plan worked. More guards come in and remove Jorg from his cell. He is then executed as ordered by Muller. Thank you for watching. If you would like to see more fast recaps, please like and subscribe to our channel. And subscribe to our channel.